What is up you guys, it's James with James Jep Tiles and I first off like to apologize for the lack of videos and I know it's been a couple of days. Um, not really much has been going on with everything going on in the world. Not that I really go anywhere for videos but you know I come home, do a couple reptile things, chill out on the couch and enjoy the rest of my day. Um, I've been getting up early to go to work, they split us up into two groups so I get up early, go to bed early, all that. It's kind of been pushing me to not want to make videos but still gonna do it so still want to do it still have the drive to do it and we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff I have some new animals I have some new hatchlings and lots of stuff to show you guys so let's hop right into it all right so first off I want to look at crested gecko hatchlings Theodore and Gerald you guys have met them tornado you met and the next one thunder hatched out a day later I wrote the same date on there um, I don't know I just wasn't thinking when I wrote it but it's in the computer so there's Either Theodore or Gerald. I think that's Theodore. That's Gerald and then Tornado and Thunder looking absolutely awesome super red um, Who's the parents? Yeah, that kind of makes sense Hopefully they don't lose a lot of their color uh, What will happen a lot of times is you'll think they look like one color and then they you know You leave them for a couple days. Maybe they go through the first shed and they kind of change really dramatically very uh, change in a very dramatic tone let's take a look at the roaches real quick tons and tons of roaches in the colonies eating like crazy this is leftover uh oh there's none in there leftover pangea from all my crested geckos and i just put them in with them uh, i'd rather feed more to my crested geckos and have a little bit extra than not have enough especially when i keep so many you know females in a breeding tank and all that sorts of jazz so let's take a look at some ice pods so these are my white duckies you guys know these um, i fed the two colonies of ice pods um, some dead guppies the other day and i froze a couple more baby guppies to put in in the future um, i'm not seeing any right now but i did see them the other day they're looking pretty active and this slightly bigger setup they seem to enjoy it um, I added a little bit more substrate in there now let's come over here these are my dwarf whites uh, known to be very prolific I have seen a lot of activity uh, and lots and lots of babies there's a little bit of fly stuff going in but look at all these guys there's a ton right there little tiny babies and uh, I'm sure well, they love to hide on this eggshell. Oh, my taquitos are done. Like I said, they love the underside of this eggshell. Uh, this is a crested gecko egg. I think there might be some inside there. Um, I put the eggshells in because there's lots of protein in the leftover yolk. And I don't know, they seem to enjoy it. Uh, this is more of the dry side. I don't really see much action over there. It's kind of just, you know, extra leaves and stuff when they run out of junk to eat over here. They can move their way over or, whatever, or what have you. And I feed this one peas and also... Uh, I gave him a dead guppy the other day, and they ate the whole thing. I could not find the remains. As for the rubber duckies, or the white duckies, I found a little bit in there, but not very much. I did have to take some out. And these are my newest addition. You can see there's a little bit too much substrate in here, but that's all right. Uh, they can't get out. If you look deep in there, those clown ice pods. Oh, there's one chilling right there. So I bought ten. Um... And, you know, hopefully I get them to reproduce. I mean, I'm sure I will. It's just a matter of time. But uh, hopefully I can do them right. And, you know, I might... Uh, if, if either of these two, if I see either of them have babies, I'm going to leave the babies and I'm not going to sell them or anything like that. Um, they're going to be in there for maybe a generation or two uh, just to make sure the colony is, like, thriving and it's not like, oh, well, I only have 10. And if I sell the babies, what if they... What if they don't have enough time to have another couple litters or, you know, there's a lot of what ifs. So if I just keep them and I let it grow and then it's like, oh, well, now I have, you know, 40 and they're having babies. I could afford to sell five to ten of each or what have you. But the dwarf whites, um, I'm thinking about getting a little cup together of maybe like 30 or 40 and post them on Facebook. We're gonna, we'll see. Um, definitely look out for these. When reptile shows come back, definitely look out for my table and have some ice pods on them. Uh, I'm not no expert on ice pods. I don't know everything about the substrates. I don't know everything about anything. I don't know anything about everything. Um, 
I think they're really cool. I seem to be doing fine keeping them, and I'll have them for sale at probably a pretty good price. Hopefully, I'll pick up another uh, another species. I want orange scaver. I have dwarf whites. I don't know the species. They're microscopic though. Rubber duckies are cubaris. Clowns are whatever the K one is. I want the ones that look, they don't look like roly polies. They have like weird like shells that kind of spike out. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know the species name, but I think they come in orange and the, and the, the purples. I want those or the powders, the blues and all that. I want, I want a species of those Should have kind of a mix uh, or get one of the bigger species as well. And I enjoy them. I just, they're so cute. Up in the incubator, still got tons of eggs. Um, I had a couple go bad, but we're looking good for the year so far. I think we might get like one or two fat tails that actually hatch. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, if nothing hatches this year, I'm definitely going to pick up uh, a couple baby females and just kind of start over next year. Uh, maybe even get a different male, who knows. Um, I can't seem to get him to put on any weight. I feed him crickets, I feed him as many as he'll take, and he just poops him right out. So I don't know what's what's going on with him, but anyway, we got some baby leopards here. Uh, I haven't checked on them yet today. But their calcium's definitely going bad. There's a snow and a normal. And they're definitely looking just a little bit bigger. They hatched a couple days ago. And this was the second clutch hatched two, two or three days later. Uh, a nice snow and then a jungle snow. Got a little bit of yellow on that one. But I'm definitely going to be holding back, um, you know, a couple of the snows. Um, at least two so I can make four in a box. Um, at least two females and if a male hatches out or towards the end of the season I might crank it up a couple degrees to try to get a male or two out of them um, Hard to tell hard to decide what I want to do uh, But it would be nice to just produce all snows out of a box next year and just have a ton of snows And then you know the next year I could buy a different morph and Pour you know all that or you know slowly grow my leopards um, You know the the, the crestids are growing my dalmatian the, these two groups are coming together uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that awesome tiger. He's definitely going to be a breeder in the future. I say he, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I definitely want to put together a tiger group. I'm going to have a small group of lily whites. I have a tank with uh, the gargoyles. That one's a grow up tank for right now. I definitely need some more tanks. Um, I definitely need another rack for grow up leopards and for more male leopards. Uh, the one I got now is, is it's, it's awesome. It just doesn't hold as many as I need. Uh, Fortunately, they're pretty pricey. Um, so yeah, I slowly, I slowly want to grow my leopards. I slowly want to grow my crustids. Um, as far as corns and other snakes, I don't really want to buy any snakes right now, except a male blue beauty or maybe a pair. Um, undecided. It's kind of up in the air right now. Season's coming up where I will have to snag one, and they're just skyrocketing price. So I might just end up picking up a male and dealing with it. But you know, in, in a year or two, I'm going to have baby corn snakes. I'm going to have baby king snakes, albinos, and head albinos. Uh, I just don't really want a ton more snakes. I like the geckos. I like having a few snakes, and it's definitely something I want to breed. But I can't see snakes being my mainstay by any means. So, right now, if we back up, this is the reptile room. Uh, those two are filled. These four are filled. The first four on this rack are filled. Animals, animal... Animal, 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 animals, animals all down here, roaches, ball python, roaches, uh, filled with eggs, isopods, geckos and all those, geckos and all those, and then some worms in some of these, and of course, more eggs. So, the reptile room is definitely growing, it's definitely expanding, um, just as I wanted to, you know, I like, uh, I like holding some back and selling some and adding a little bit of new stuff so the next year I have different things to hold back and just slowly growing and it just kind of makes it easier. It's like, well if I produce 10 snow leopard geckos and I keep two of them back, you know, either as future breeders or replacement breeders, something like that, then I sell eight and, you know, that money goes to shipping boxes and to shows and all that. And at the end of the day, maybe I make a dollar. Whereas if I produce 10 snows and 
you know, 10 super snow white and yellow radars or something crazy like that and a bunch of other stuff and crested and all that, it's like the cost to keep them goes up a little bit, but then I still have the same outlets to sell them. And you know, if I can sell them all, which I'm confident in myself that I can, then I make a lot more profit than I can, you know, buy bigger racks and put the money into maybe buying a house and having a whole room there and paying off my car and doing all this other jazz and stuff I want to do and stuff I want to do for YouTube and stuff I want to do for my animals. Uh, it just makes sense to expand and to kind of not think about the future, but at the same time, take it day by day. So that's just my take on uh, my reptile room. I hope you guys enjoyed a little update. Uh, I'll catch you in the next video, hopefully in two days. Hopefully I, I stick to the schedule again. Um, so anyway, my name is James from James Reptiles. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that definitely helps out. Make sure to hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, jamesjeptiles at gmail.com if you have any questions. And I'm going to go eat some taquitos.